Hey guys, what's going on? James here, back with the income journey. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a store that's done over 23,000 sales on Etsy. And one of their main products is actually taking photos and turning them into watercolors. Now, I made a video a few weeks back where I discussed this concept and I showed you a few stores that were doing this. And lots of people in the comments said, James, can you show us how to do this? So I went out there, I figured out how we can do this. Big shout out to the Photoshop tutorials channel on YouTube, which I will link down below, which is where I learned how to do this. But in this video, we're gonna take a quick look at the store, see how much money they're making with this type of product. And then I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you inside Photoshop, how you can do this, how you can actually create your own template to do this. And then once you've got that template, you can pretty much just go ahead and you know drag and drop the photo from the customer, into Photoshop and it will automatically create your watercolor template. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at exactly what we're talking about if you're not really sure. And if you do enjoy the video, please hit that like button, hit subscribe if you are new here and let's take a look. So this is the store, it's called Dorinda Art. It's got 23,517 sales here, five star reviews, people absolutely love it. So this is the product that we're talking about today. It's similar to a product that I showed off in a previous video and lots of people wanted to know, you know, how can we go ahead and do this? So you can see here, you know, we'll click down a few of them and you can see how they turn this photo here into this kind of watercolor painting style. And then they sell this as a few different options. So you've got uh, different sizes here. I'm not sure whether it comes. So it looks like these come as prints, I would imagine, or maybe they're actually just JPEGs. Let's take a look down. So you'll receive a digital. So this is literally just digital. They're not even selling print on demand here. So 17 pounds literally to drag and drop a photo. Now there is a little bit of edits if you want to make the photo really, really nice, make it look a little bit better. There's going to have to be a, a few like alterations between the photos that you're doing. But 17 pounds, about $25 or so for literally drag and dropping once you've created that template once. So some really good margins on this. Uh, and you can see here they do it for loads of different images here showing you. And then they add some personalization in here. You could do this, I think would be really good on a canvas. I think it would look really, really cool, especially because a canvas has that kind of like texture to it that looks, you know, like kind of like watercolor. Um, so let's go ahead, jump in and, and do this. So if we take a look at their store, you can see that they do this for lots of different things. They also do the, you know, the clip art stuff that we talk about with stuff from Creative Fabrica. They're doing it here for dogs, pets. Uh, you know, they're, they're just kind of like a general digital store here on Etsy doing lots of the stuff that we talk about. So it's a really cool store, based out of the UK, very nice stuff. Now let's go ahead and show you how you can create these, create templates and have a really simple workflow for getting these products delivered. All right, so I'm gonna jump into Photoshop here. You can see I have got a photo of a house, very nice house, pretty good. Um, but right here, we're gonna turn it into this. So I've already went ahead and done it here uh, just once, but I'm gonna show you from scratch. So this is the before and this is the after. So this would be the photo the customer sends you, and this right here is the end product that you would send the customer, either as a digital file, or if they want it as a canvas, a print, you can send that too. So you can see over here on the right hand side, there's a few th different things that we have to do. It's actually very easy to do. But just before we do that, I want to show you exactly how it would work once you've created the template to show you how easy it is to do this multiple times. So what I've done here is I went ahead, I've grabbed another image of a house on Google, an even nicer house right here. And what you're gonna do, so all you have to do is that would be you know the new customer image sent in by a customer. So we've got that image. We come into our image, we come over here to the smart object and we double click this. And this means we can like edit what's inside the smart object. So if we come in here, we can actually, let's just unlock this. Now we can drag this image around. We're gonna drag this into that smart object. Uh, we're gonna delete the previous image right here. We're gonna make this a little bigger, make it fit inside uh, this frame. It's not exactly the same size, so it might look a little different, but we'll go with this for now. So I'm gonna click on that. We're gonna go ahead and X out of it. We want to save it, yes. And then now, once it loads in, we go back to the original here. You can see it now has the new home loaded in here. And to me, this actually looks pretty okay right off the bat, but you could go ahead and edit it, make it more perfect for that specific image size. But that's how easy it is. Now, once the customer sends you, drag it in. You know, if you're doing this with, you know, pictures of dogs, pictures, you know, maybe it's wedding photos you're doing it with, you can do it with this method. So let's show you exactly how you can do that. So I'm gonna start off with this image 
right here. And I've got some notes over to the side here because I'm not super, super in depth on, on how to do this. So I might be looking over here at my screen just to get some notes. So what we're going to do first is click on this layer over here on the right hand side. And what we're going to do is duplicate that. You can do that by clicking on the layer and clicking control J. You can see we now have two copies of that layer. What we're going to do is first just turn off the second layer. We don't need that one to be there right now. So the first thing that we want to do here is add some filters to this image right now. It's like a perfect image. It looks, you know, just like a normal photo. What we want to do is right click on our second layer. We want to go ahead and convert this to a smart object. So this just means we can make more edits to it. So now it's a smart object. We want to come up here to filter. We want to come down to filter gallery. And in the filter gallery, we're going to add a dry brush. So click on dry brush. You want your settings to be brush size two, brush detail eight and texture one and click OK on that. You can see it changes the photo up a little bit. It doesn't look just yet like watercolor, but we're going to add some more stuff. So again, come up to filter, go to filter gallery. This time we're going to be adding the cutout feature. So on the cutout feature, we want our settings to be eight, zero and two. And then we're going to click OK on this. Now this time we need to make a little bit of an edit to that filter. It is going to be the top filter right here. So if you double click over on this uh, little icon here at the right hand side, it's going to open up this tab. So what we want to do is actually change the mode and we want to change that mode in this one to pin light. So we're going to change that to pin light, leave this at 100%, starting to look a little more like watercolor. So now we've done that, we want to add in another fit filter again. So come up here to filter. This time we want to go down to blur and we want to come down to smart blur. And in here, we're going to be having the radius as five and the threshold as 100. So pretty much just the basics right here. We don't need to do anything else. So we're going to click OK on that. It's going to add that blur. And you can see the photo starting to look a little blurrier right here. And again, we want to click on this icon here beside smart blur. And we want to make another change, which is change this mode over. Uh, we want to change this one down to screen if I can find that. And then we want to change the opacity to 50% or so. So I'm just going to type 50 in here. Click OK. Now we are good to go. Now we need to add one more filter. This is the last one. Luckily, there's quite a few of them. We want to go to filter. We want to go down to stylize. And in stylize, we want to go to find edges. Now, this is going to make your drawing look pretty weird, obviously. Uh, but now that we've got that enabled, we want to, again, double click over on the right hand side. We're going to change that mode over to multiply. And we're going to get our image back looking a little better. But now it's starting to really look like a watercolor. So I'm going to click OK on this. And that is all of the filters that we essentially need to add. So now that we've done that, there's a couple more things we need to do. You do want to go over, I'm going to leave two links in the description where you can download a couple of assets. And them assets are going to be the paper uh, pack right here. This pack comes with paper texture and then a portrait. We're just going to need the paper texture. So I'm going to drag this paper texture over my drawing. I'm going to flip it around. So you just come to the edge here, turn it around. and I'm going to make this the size uh, of the image right here. So that's looking good right there. Click enter. Now that is on. So now we've got the paper texture. We want to click on our layer right here. So when we click on our layer, we want to click this button right here down at the bottom, which adds a layer mask. When that layer mask is highlighted, we want to click control I to invert it over to black. And then when we click on the paper texture, we want to click this options tab right here, come down and go to multiply. Now, if you had, I did this, I made this mistake. If you have this layer selected here, you're going to see it, the image. You shouldn't be able to see that. So you just want to select that bottom layer and hide it. And then the next thing I'm going to do just to make things look a little better on the image is I'm going to crop it to make it a little bit bigger. Now you may already have just done this in because you know the, the the frame that you're going to be working with or this, this Photoshop setup you're going to be working with is probably whatever the image size is that you're selling. So you would take the image from the customer and put it in there in you know whatever way you want to frame it. I'm just going to make this a little bigger so it gives us some room at the edges to play with and add in some text at the end. So I'm just going to make that a little bigger. Hit enter right there. Let that load. Uh, and now we just need to make this. A little bit bigger again 100 fine so the next thing that we want to do is come over to our brush now you want to make sure that you have a white brush selected so i'm going to click that i'm going to click on my brushes and i've got a ton of brushes selected right here i have loads of brushes installed in photoshop as you can see these ones here are my watercolor brushes so again i'm going to leave a link down below in the description 
to some watercolor brushes. You can grab them here over on DeviantArt. It's a free download. You can come in here and just click the download button, download these brushes, and they're really, really good for doing tons of different things, not just what we're doing here today, but if you're doing any sort of watercolor work, absolutely perfect. So I've already installed them. You just download them, double click the file. It'll install uh, the brushes in here and we can click on any one of these that we want to use. So I'm going to select this one, number 482 right here, just for now. Uh, I'm going to move this screen out of the way a little bit. And then what we're going to do is select our layer mask right here, this black one. And you can use the, the keys on your keyboard, the kind of like square brackets, and that will allow you to make it bigger or smaller. So as you can see right here, as I click, we start to see our house coming back in with this kind of watercolor feel to it. And it's very, very kind of uh, light right now. You can't see it, but if you keep clicking and the more you click, the more of that paper it's really going to remove. So I really just want to get, you know, the housing, get a little bit of the front drive in right here. I like to keep the middle of the photo a little bit darker and more watercolory. And then what we can do is select another brush. So if we come over here, maybe we want something, you know, just a little bit smaller uh, to work with. I'm going to just make it a little bit smaller again. You start to kind of work in them edges a little bit, whatever way we want. And you'll see that, you know, when you go to Etsy, you look at some of them, some of them have like splatter at the edges, right? They'll have like splattered color and that's fine if that's what you want to do you don't necessarily need to do that you can have whatever sort of style you want it's probably better to have a little bit of a different style so you can do this however you like so for example just to show you if we click on one of these brushes uh, which is really really big right here we definitely need to make that smaller we could add like a splatter effect up here in the edges right so now we've got this like splatter effect you can see how if you click on it it starts to really you know take away that area so i don't like that uh, so you'd really have to click on the edges like that. Oh, that's even too, you know, I'd maybe change the opacity on this, put that down to like, maybe like 24%. You can kind of splatter it in, you know, it kind of does look okay in some of the areas and that's completely fine. So you can do it how you like, play around with your brushes, really get a feel for them. It takes time and it takes, you know, just playing around with a couple of different images and seeing what looks best and what doesn't. Some images, obviously, now if you added a different house in here, maybe wouldn't look so good with the splatter on it in that position and you want to add it to a different position. Or if you added, you know, a portrait of someone in there, that's not going to look good on this. You're going to have to redo it and do the brush again, but you could just start with that template, add the photo in and then remove the area. So that's essentially how you do the watercolor bit. So I'm going to uh, exit out of the brushes here right now. Again, you probably want to spend some more time perfecting the image for the person, making sure everything looks correct. Like down here, we have this like straight line. Obviously that's where the photo ended. You'd maybe want to blend that in a little better, but there's one last thing you can do. So on the paper right here, yeah, you can come down and click on this button, like the little half circle, click on this and go to curves. And right here in the curves tab, we can just make things look a little bit darker. It's going to make the darks darker and we're going to be able to see it, it looks a little bit more watercolory. So what I'm going to do is click on the line just up here at the top and you can see just ever so slightly, it's getting a little bit darker. We can pull that line down. You can play around with this. You know, if I throw it up there, it just starts getting all crazy looking silly. But if we pull that line down, you can see the lights in the house just a little bit more vibrant and pop out. But now I think this looks really, really good. So we've really got like a nice sellable item right there. That took what, maybe five minutes to do, not long at all. And again, once you've done this now, you can just double click on this smart object over here, replace that photo with whatever photo you want in there. And you're pretty much good to go to, you know, sell again and again, you can create templates for tons of stuff. If you want to do like a pencil effect one, you want to do, uh, you know, a oil painting style one, right? There's tons of different effects that you can do, have these templates, drag them in $25 a pop. So obviously making this sound much easier than it actually is when you go out there and start selling in it. But ultimately the workflow that you have to do, getting the sales might be hard, doing the SEO might be hard, but that is the process on the back end that you can go ahead and do. So next thing I want to do is just add in some text right here. I'm just going to use winter snow as an example, but if you guys want to get some really, really nice fonts and again, just having a nice font makes things so much better, makes things stand out so much more than using the default fonts from Photoshop. So if you do want to get some fonts, I'd recommend coming over here to create a Fabrica and you've got stuff like this down here. You got this spectacular 500 fonts bundle. It's going to give you an absolute ton of fonts, all different styles. Uh, and I actually think they do have a Black Friday deal. I'm not sure if I can get access to that for you guys, but if I can, 
I'll leave a link down below. There will be a link anywhere for Creative Fabrica for like the full subscription. You can get everything, all of the assets on here. It's around $20 a month when you use my coupon code. But right here, this is $19 if you just wanted to buy this. So you had a ton of fonts that you could use. Then you could download this. Uh, go ahead and use it. It's $19. I think this is maybe the Black Friday deal right here. Uh, so you can check that out. If you want to use it, use it. It's just going to get you some nice fonts. Because if you go and look and you want to buy fonts that can be commercially used, it can cost you like $50, $100 for one single font. In here, you're getting an absolute ton of stuff that you can use. And it has commercial license over here, meaning you can use it commercially on your product. So really, really cool stuff. So let's go ahead and add this in. I'm just going to say uh, something like our sweet home, just as I had on the other one right there. Make this a little bigger. And then you could go ahead. You could put a date in here. So let's just say 21st of what is it? The 11th, 2021. And again, it's nice to have contrasting fonts. So I don't think that looks good having both them the exact same size and the same font. So I'm just going to choose another font here that just looks a little more uh, kind of olden times or something like that. So let's click const here. I don't know why I've put commas in uh, instead of periods. So we got periods in there. Now we can make this a little smaller again. And I think that's looking much, much nicer now when we have that done. So there you go. That's your fi finished final product of a watercolor house created on Photoshop that you can now sell as a digital or print on demand file on Etsy in a really easy to do tutorial. I think I've been recording for 17 minutes, probably some of that gets cut out, but 17 minutes st start to finish and I'm filling them in a tutorial. So if you're doing that yourself, you can do it much, much quicker after you've done it a couple of times. Really easy to do. Nothing complicated going on here in Photoshop. Uh, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.